happy Sunday from wherever in the world you are joining us from. Thank you very much for joining us with uh, Lockdown with Hope. Lockdown with Hope is your anchor through life struggles, challenges, and chaos. My name is Olive Emody, and I'm your host on Locked Down with Hope. Today on the show, we're going to be joined by Pastor Yemi Davids, the lead pastor of Global Impact Church, as he shares the word of God with us. Also, we'll be sharing the scripture of the day. As usual, we always start the show with a song to set us in the mood, to prepare our hearts to hear the word that will be shared today. Also, at some point during the show, we open the phone lines and give you the opportunity to call in and ask questions, make comments or contributions, or say whatever it is you would like to share with the pastor. Now, please remember that when you're calling we have a few minutes for that so you might want to make it as quickly as possible all right uh the show starts in a moment but i'd like us to start with a very very important segment the segment called worship when we come back i'll be telling you some more about the song that we're going to be listening to all right i hope you had a good week i know that the week has been tough there's been a lot of darkness and even today we got some sad news on social media with the passing of Ibiduni Igodalo, the founder, an event planner, as well as the wife of Pastor uh, uh, Igodalo. And th there's so much sadness in the Christian folk. Even those who are not Christians, people are generally sad at her passing. Our thoughts and our prayers are with Pastor Itua Igodalo and his family. Our thoughts and our prayers are with everyone who is mourning her loss. She lived such an impactful life. And we hope that as we leave our days on earth, we'll be able to live impactful lives as well. We'll go on a very quick break. When we come back, we'll be starting off the show with some worship. I particularly love the song by Messi Chingu. It's titled Boy Come. Boy Come, you know, it's not an English song, but you will learn very quickly that worship transcends languages. It transcends genres of music. You don't need to understand the language to be able to know just how intense and how powerful the worship of God is. And I'm just going to read out some of the lyrics of the song. The song says, you know, since you are not like a man, receive thanks. He that helps people for free, receive thanks. Honor belongs to you. The King of Kings, receive thanks. It's just a song that praises, worships, honors and thanks God. So if you are in that Thanksgiving mood, regardless, I dare you, we know that you are sad. Things have probably not been going along the way that you expected them to. But I dare you to put your praise and your worship before God and join us as we worship God with this song by Messi Chinwo Boy. Come when we come back, Pastor Yemi Davis will be with us in a moment. Please don't go away. Boy Come by Messi Chinwo. Boy Come is just a song that is giving God praise and honor. And I dare you to step out of your comfort zone, to give God something that even you don't have. I have a principle that when you're sad, it's the, the, the most logical thing for you to do in that moment is to sulk. You know, you want to stew in your sadness. But whenever I think of the scripture that says, give and it will come back to you, good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. I don't always think of it just as money. It's even in that sad state, yes, I'm sad, yes, I don't feel good. But inside the little joy that I feel, how about I give some to God? That's like stepping out of your comfort zone, giving something to God. And in the end, he comes around and doubles it for you. And you find out that you realize that when the focus is not just on you and how you feel and what you have, you end up seeing things from a different perspective and God steps into the picture. Today we're joined by Pastor Yemi Davids, the lead pastor of Global Impact Church, as he blesses us with God's word. Good to see you again, Pastor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you, Ali? I'm very well, thank you, sir. How are you too? I'm fine, but uh, it's not too much of a joyful laugh. They are our thoughts are with Pastor Itwa Godalo, yes, the Trinity indeed. Church, the Body of Christ, Nigeria. You know, it's painful, ah, a very painful exit. Uh, pray for strength for their family, the children, and every one of us, we need strength this season. Amen. We Amen. need strength this season, yeah. And Pastor, one thing that really well, stood out for me with how she lived her life was how she was always going out of her way for other people. With her foundation, she was always, she was the definition oh, yes. of hospitality. Oh, yes. You know, which is something that we're going to be looking at today. She always went out of her way, helping people and putting a smile on their faces. Just, she was just a bringer of joy. Yeah, correct. Uh, that's my, those are my thoughts this afternoon, actually. Uh, hospitality, you already hit it home when you mentioned that when you are in a kind of situation, you still go out of your comfort zone to do something, either for God or for somebody else. And that's the major lesson I think people can learn this season. Uh, because of the lockdown, 
because of the uh, situations we have now, people can become self-centered, looking into themselves, and and that that way you miss the entire point. Uh, Joseph was in prison. He was wrongly accused. His brother sold him into slavery. He should have been completely depressed, only into himself, not willing to even help anybody. But in of that in the midst of that state, Joseph was able to still observe that some fellow prisoners had a problem. That's amazing. He looked at the other guys in the prison and said to them, why are you guys sad this morning? What happened to you guys? Normally, they should be asking Joseph every day, why are you sad? He's the one now asking others, why are you sad? Why, why, are, you, why are you like this? And then they mentioned to him the dreams that they had. And Joseph, in the midst of his own situation, was still able to go out of his own way and resolve their own situation for them. I feel that is a kind of hospitality. Okay, so we have to learn from that, knowing fully well that it was even doing that that became this, the link to his own breakthrough. So in the midst of uh, economic uh, deprivation, uh, COVID-19, lockdown, some people have losing their jobs, don't become so self-centered that you want everybody to be looking at you, help, helping you, comforting you. No, go and help others. One way or the other, find someone to encourage, find someone to pray for us. Even from the little you have, find somebody in need and bless them with. Uh, I, I realized that it was those guys that Joseph went out of his way to talk with, to encourage and even interpret their dreams. Two years after, they were the ones that recommended him in the, uh, to the palace. And that was a change of his story. So I believe that um, helping others is, is the key this season. Uh, don't be into yourself. Don't say, I'm going through this thing. Everybody should help me. No, go out of your way and help others. Let me read the scripture uh, as a round up there. Hebrews 13, verse 2. It says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. NIV, NIV says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Okay, so in that context, uh, you go out of your way to help others within your capacity. When, when, when Joseph was helping the other guys in prison, they became angels to him. You know, they were the ones that recommended him. They spoke of his ability and his, and his talent, and then he was called for in a great place. So I believe that uh, as we go through this year, uh, pre-COVID, COVID, post-COVID, people should not be into themselves. Don't be, don't be self-centered or selfish. Go out of your way to be a blessing. Spiritual blessings, financial blessings, encouragement to others. And God will use that as a point of contact for your own bailout. So your own next season. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that will be a blessing to someone uh, this afternoon. I'll leave over to you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Very well put. You know, it just reminds me of the widow of uh, Zarephath and uh, Prophet Elijah, and how in yeah. the moment of her lack, she didn't have enough, you know. Uh, oh. The first instinct is to hold on to what you have, to hold, you know, hold what you have. Even yeah. the story of the five loaves of bread and two fish. On a normal wow. day, you would think, how can I share this? It's just five, you can't feed 5,000. But God took that five and two, five loaves of bread and two fish, and multiplied it. And he fed over 5,000, such that there were over 12 baskets remaining. So such a beautiful uh, uh, analogy, Pastor. Thank you so much for sharing this word. We'll open the phone lines if you'd like to ask a question or make a contribution. The numbers to call are on your TV screen. We'll take a quick video announcement. When we come back from this video announcement, we'll be opening the phone lines and we'll be speaking with you. Please feel free to call in, ask a question or ask questions. I have questions I'd like to ask Pastor, some questions that you know have um, I, I have written down here, but uh, we're still speaking with Pastor Yemi David, lead pastor of Global Impact Church. But first, let's take this video announcement. Welcome back to Locked Down with Hope. Today we're talking about hospitality and emphasizing on the need to step out of your comfort zone to be there for others. We're joined by Pastor Yemi David, the lead pastor of Global Impact Church. And today we're going to be looking at, you know, how important hospitality, whatever questions you have in that line, the numbers to call are on your TV screen. Please feel free to call in, ask questions, make comments and contributions now. Pastor, you know, I had made reference to 
uh, the widow. I, I don't think it's widow of Zarephet, yeah. but it was basically uh, what I was trying to make reference to was the story between the widow and Elisha, and she said, oh, yeah, she had yeah. just enough to eat for her and her son to die, and the prophet said, give it to me, I'll eat it first. I can imagine that happening yeah. in 2020. Imagine a pastor <laughs> telling someone, oh, that's just one jar you have. Oh, give it to me, let me eat it first. And the way the man will tread <laughs> on social media the whole day. So it basically defies logic. It doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things, but yeah. spiritual things don't make sense in the physical a lot of the time. Yeah. Pastor, yeah. let's talk about when people feel that they are being cheated when they give. I'll give you an example. Sometimes we see people that have needs, you know, people that are begging or people that are less privileged, and you've gone out of your way to give them, and you suddenly feel like this person is not sincere. This person, is, this person has cheated me because not only have, they, um, have I given to them, they have left me to go and meet someone else. Why, you know, why should you keep giving? Is it, is it possible to keep giving even when you feel that this person is not deserving of yeah. your giving? Yeah. Uh, I think if we understand the mystery of giving, it affects the way we go about it. We don't reap where we sow, we reap what we sow. It's a Pastor, major principle people hold that understand. thought. We, we don't reap yeah. where we sow, we reap what we sow. We have Dr. Ade on the line. Please sow. speak with him and uh, we'll come back okay. to that question. Hello, Dr. Ade. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. All right, please turn down the volume yeah. of your TV set and yeah, feel free to go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yes, please go ahead. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Lord. What um, our pastor just said now. But um, something that is bothering me, I need to ask this question. Okay. Most of the, the big churches in Nigeria today, they don't have the small churches that they are just running. It's not their church member. Why must it be so? And hell, then Jesus said, Go and establish the gospel. But now in, in this country, if you don't belong to one particular church, they will not have the younger one that is going. Okay. Why? It's not to be so. All right. Uh, oh, so if, I'm, I, if I get you correctly, yeah, your question is pastor. why. What do you say to that? If I'm not from. But if I'm, if I'm not from MFM, MFM will not help me. If I'm not from Medin, uh, Medin will not help me because I'm just coming up. No, 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 no. Just no, 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 no. All right. Just saying, give me an example. Okay, yeah. Dr. Adi, let's, let's hear from Pastor. No, I don't, I don't agree with you. I mean, for us as a church, for instance, um, and I know a lot of churches are doing a lot of things. I mean, when, when this pandemic started, we spent millions of naira you know, majority of those monies were for outsiders. The reason why we don't usually post people's faces uh, or the account numbers that we send money to is for dignity. We have a lot, but we spent millions on two separate waves of givings, food stuff on people that we don't even know. We we sent out details of our account number, I mean, of our of our of our church addresses and everything details, and people called in. We did some interviews with them, and many of them are not church members. And in our church, during this period, we've had a lot of smaller churches. But we, you, you know, uh, the talent we have is this, that I'm helping a particular small church. I shouldn't come on uh, Wazobia Max and be mentioning it. I'm, I'm almost, it's not good for that person. So that's a way giving to have the dignity of the person. I can't bring somebody because I gave you food stuff. I don't like an actual picture of the person on social media. I gave this woman a rise in, in such a such a place. It's not the best. So that we don't show those things, uh, get some reports all over the social media. So I, I don't want them to generalize that. Churches are doing a lot. A lot. All right, uh, sir. We, Pastor, we, we still spend hundreds. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I, I wanted to say, uh, you know, we'll still continue with that, but we have one more caller yeah. on the line. Obi, okay. if I'm correct. Hello, Obi. Please turn down the volume of your TV. Hello, Pastor. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, oh shoot, we lost that call. All right, please do well to call wow. back. Uh, we, we would love to speak yeah. with you before we wrap up this segment. Yes. So, so Pastor, we're basically talking about the fact that churches are doing a lot, and you shouldn't generalize and assume yeah. 
that yeah, churches we did a lot. Doing. We did ah, we 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 were stretched even during it, this lockdown period because we had to start, but much more cash. Do you know we were sending we sent seven thousand five hundred or hundreds of people in Lagos, men that we never met before. And my own thinking was even if you had like you were saying earlier, even if you lied, at least you will use it for something in your house, either to buy food or something. Okay, so that is uh, that is a bit of a generalization. And believe me, I have friends uh, that are pastors, and I'm privy to the many things they did. We still distributed about 2,000 loaves of bread in the last two weeks in various neighborhoods. You understand? Different different things. You know, neighborhoods where you have members of your church there are non members. But we don't want to brand somebody's faces and families just to make a name. I, I feel it's not too healthy i feel it's not too dignifying for those involved but the reports are also there so we should not generalize however if any pastor is listening to me or any church is listening to me we should be helping others to our own local assembly alone okay right. we've got to help other people as long as it's a human being i think they deserve our help okay all right pastor we have elizabeth on the line hello elizabeth good afternoon yeah good afternoon good afternoon all right please go ahead Okay, Pastor, good afternoon, sir. Can you please speak up? Your voice is a little low. Can you please speak up? Your voice is a little low. And turn down the volume of your good TV afternoon. set as well. Good afternoon. Yes. I would like to, uh, like, seek the pastor's advice. Okay. Oh, what is happening? Elizabeth, wow. please call back. She wanted your advice on something, okay. Pastor. Please, um, if we can leave the, leave okay. the phone lines open a little longer oh, yeah. in case we can take okay. Elizabeth's call again. Let's try to see if she's lucky to be the next caller and then we can wrap up yeah. this segment. All right, so Pastor, we're talking about before we started taking the calls on you reap yeah, what you yeah, sow, yeah, not yeah. how you sow. You reap what you sow, where, where, not where, not okay. where you sow. You reap so not only, where you if sow. If I do something, uh, if I give something to you now, only to help you, uh, I will reap that thing, but not from you, not necessarily from you. Because if you don't understand that factor, I will be expecting things from you back. If I give only uh, 10,000 naira, for instance, you know, to help in a time of need. So in my mind, I'm thinking Olive will get back to me one day with 100,000. No, no, you reap what you sow, not where you sow. So you leave that person. The harvest comes from God. What God does is to raise on of blessing. So when you will help people, let them misbehave. That is their own seed. Your own seed, you will reap it. Okay? That's very important. You reap what you sow, not where you sow. If you're expecting harvest every time from where you sow, you will be disappointed. You will be manipulating people. You'll be expecting from people unnecessarily. You don't need all those things. No, we reap what we sow, not where we sow. All right. Most of the times, God will choose a different channel of harvest. So if somebody now does me bad for... Oh, since we're... you to stop us from in the right seats, yeah. Okay, Pastor, very quickly, because we, we, we're running out of time. For people who want to actually start giving, stepping out of their comfort zone to be there for others, but don't know how to go about it, because the truth is, not everybody knows I, I how to... I didn't hear what you said. I said very quickly because we've run out of time. For people who want to do yeah. all that you've said, they want to be, they want to go out of their way for other people, they want to give, but they don't know how to because yeah. they are used to looking after themselves and themselves alone. So it's something that they are trying to learn. Yeah. What are the words of encouragement yeah. or advice you'd give to them to help them? Uh, what you do is find somebody to pray for. If, for instance, I'm trusting God for the fruit of the womb now, Find somebody that is trusting God for the fruit of the womb and concentrate your prayers on that person. Forget about yourself. Okay? If you are trusting God for a job, find somebody else that you know is looking for a job and pray for that person. Start with the things around you. God is always looking for a point of contact, something he can use to multiply back. That's how God operates. Seed, time, and harvest. So many times when we are praying for things, God, wants to look, God, is, look, God is looking for a point of contact. So that's why prayer or do something. He will not pick that thing, no matter how small it is, and then multiply it back and then get it back to us in the form of harvest, which sometimes can appear like answer to our prayers. So for those people, don't give up on yourself. You have something you can bless others with. It can be praying for somebody else. It can be just a word of encouragement. You will send on social media today to people. Just send a word of encouragement that in case you are going through, just, just, just start small where you are. 
Very it's true. more blessed to give than to receive. The moment you do it, you find that even your emotional state will change. And the moment your emotional state changes, ideas begin to flourish inside you. Those ideas will give you direction. When it was happening in a couple of days, you know what to do next. And you are not where you used to be. That's so you've actually, you know, you've given me a challenge. I'm going to write out all the things mm -hmm. that I want, uh, you know, all the things that I, I'm trusting God for. I okay. look for people that I know yes. that want those yes. things. And throughout this week, I am not going to pray for myself until next I'm week, Sunday. Them. I'm going to pray for these people. Yeah. And I'm urging yeah. someone who is watching to Fantastic. also join me on this challenge. Let's take the focus away from ourselves and pl place the focus on somebody else. Because I, I believe that there have been times when I've been in a fix and God has used other people to intercede for me and strengthen me. So this time around, yeah. let our focus be on other people. Thank you so much for joining us, Pastor. It's been a delight like to have you as always and we look forward to having you next you. week thank you all right pastor have a blessed week we've been speaking with pastor yemi davis the lead pastor of global impact church and we have a video announcement we'll take a look at this video announcement and when we come back it'll be time for me to lead you to the next seg segment which is the scripture of the day but for now check out this video announcement Greatness is a function of wisdom. The wiser we are, the better we live. Join us every Sunday at Global Impact Church. Host Yemi and Bimbo David. For inquiries, visit www.globalimpactng.org. Global Impact Church. Impact Church. Think greatness. Greatness. Welcome back to Locked Down with Hope. Now, this segment is particularly created to encourage you to pick verses of the scripture, memorize them, learn them, and apply them to your life. Now, today's scripture is taken from uh, Psalms 27, 14. You get to find out. And the reason why we chose this scripture was because, you know, there are times when you want something and you're quick to make moves, quick to take the next step without actually asking what God wants for you. So take a deep breath. Stop. Before you make that next decision or that next move, take a deep breath. Stop. Wait, ask God, do you want this for me? And remember, the focus should not be on you. Put the focus on God and put the focus on someone else who is in need of that thing or who needs to, you know, who is in that place. How about you decide to start praying for someone who is at a fix, someone who wants clarity, all right? Let's take a look at our video, our scripture of the day. When we come back, I'll be wrapping things up here. The scripture of the day is taken from the book of Psalm, from chapter 27, verse 14. Let us read it in three different translations. The New Living Translation Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. In the Amplified Version, Wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. The Passion Translation. Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous, and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting, for he will never disappoint you. And because we have a promise-keeping God, indeed, he will never disappoint you. I hope that that word encourages you, lifts your spirit, and that you join me on this challenge to put the focus on someone else for the rest of the week. Think of something you so desperately want and think of someone else you know in that position. And rather than pray for yourself, pray for them. When you pray for them, someone else, God will raise someone else to pray for you, all right? Let's shift the focus from ourselves this week. And next week, we'll gather together again and we'll give our status report, all right? Until then, remember that because you are in this world, you are salt and you are light. Have yourselves a wonderful week. See you on Sunday. Bye-bye. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.